Hi, I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackGear.com, and today we're going to do a product review on the LS2 Aero Full Face Helmet. With the Aero, you have two choices of shell material. This is the fiberglass composite right here. The prices on this are going to start at $199 for solids. We're going to go up to $239 for replica graphics. Then there is an optional carbon shell. Prices there are going to span from $349 to $369. Free shipping for any order over $40 to the lower 48 United States. Affordable and fast international shipping. No restocking fees. Really important with helmets. You got to get a good fit. Get the helmet from us. Wear it in the house all you need to. Even leave the shield sticker on the whole gig, right? Wear it in the house. Make sure you love that fit and feel before you take it out on the bike. That way, if you need to send it back for return or exchange, you're going to avoid every hassle and avoid every fee. Best of all, this qualifies for our STG cash back customer rewards. You're going to get a great store credit when you buy this. You can use on your next order here at STG. The Aero Helmet is the race, the performance helmet within the LS2 line. A little quick pedigree, MotoGP, Yanni Hernandez, he is an LS2 athlete riding, racing, and crashing in this very helmet here. So it's got a good, strong pedigree. Let's talk certification. It is ECE and DOT certified. Within the LS2 line, right, this is the only one that we're gonna review that uses the double D ring retention system. For me, that is key for a track or a race helmet. It has to have that, not the quick release stuff. I think those are great for the street, but I wouldn't use that on the racetrack. Three shell sizes, fiberglass composite shell. The extra small and small are gonna share a shell. Medium and large, share a shell. Extra large and the 2X, will share the third and final shell. So you're going to have different exterior shapes, right? Sizes, okay? I wear a medium. Let's talk fit right now. 58 centimeters on the money. I would rate my head shape as intermediate oval. LS2, in their literature and their catalogs, they're billing their helmets as, you know, more of a long oval. My experience would lead me to label this as an intermediate oval. For example, this medium, fit me spot on. I actually really enjoyed the fit quite a bit. Not even considering the price point, right? It was a great race appropriate, sport appropriate fit. Now that said, when you put this helmet on, right? When you pull it over, you grab onto the two straps, right? You want to give it a little pull because it takes a little effort to get it over the crown. That is on purpose. You want the helmet, the neck roll of the helmet to seal upright. A proper fitting helmet should be snug with no real hot spots, no pressure points where you're like, ah, oh, it's really biting me right there, but it should be snug all the way around. And that is what I always look for, whether I'm riding on the street or I'm riding on the track, I want that good snug fit because it's the safest in the end. Now, if you're going to ride exclusively on the street and you're just you really prefer that more comfortable fit because i've seen in some of their literature where they kind of suggest with this maybe going up a size ordering a size larger if you want a more comfortable fit then consider that okay if you're going to use it primarily for street riding but i would say if you want a proper track fit or a proper helmet fit to take the measurement pull the trigger on the size, the size chart would indicate, and I think you're going to be good to go. If not, you know we got you covered with the exchange process. We got that here, no problem. So, high points, performance. What did I think? Where did I test it? I rode in this helmet at Barber Motorsports Park the day after the Moto America round. Smoking hot, 100 degrees. That, that weekend was just epically hot down there. Okay, so definitely got to test the ventilation system on the helmet. That's the thing most people ask about, how did it vent? I would say it vented good. Have I ridden in helmets that vented better? Absolutely I have, and they cost two, three, four times as much as this one did. I would say this was adequate, right? It flowed enough air to keep me cool and focused. Noise production, not bad, I would say 
we're not talking shoe berth level C3 Pro here, but we're talking very quiet, end of the day. I was wearing earplugs on the track, on the street, I've ridden this a little bit. On the street, depending on the length of your ride and your tolerance for the noise, right, you may or may not need earplugs. I did not need the earplugs. Let's show you the vents right now. We have a two-stage chin vent. The exterior switch right here controls these two ports. Those are going to be used to demist the shield. We've got a breath deflector on the inside of the helmet. It helps to encourage the air up onto the shield. The lower ports allow air to flow into the actual chin bar of the helmet. Okay, a couple of stages there, kind of a midpoint off or full on. That is definitely effective. Allows a lot of air to drive in there. Helps to keep you cool. Up here on the top of the helmet, slide vents on or off. One on each side. The action of all the vents is good. An indication of quality for sure. Exhaust vents. Diffuser here on the back covers an exhaust vent there. And then we have molded into the shell an exhaust vent, one on each side. Field division. So important on a sport bike, especially on the racetrack. Huge field division here. The shield is a, a definitely a strength of this helmet. They're using optically correct plastics. I'm showing you a dark smoke right now. That's not what it's going to come with. It's going to come with the clear. The clear shield is also fog-free insert ready. Okay, so is the dark. I didn't use it. It was so hot there. I had no need to. I had all the vents open. If you're in a situation where fog could be an issue, pick up that accessory fog-free insert. This also is meant to accept race tear-offs on the tinted optional ones or, of course, the clear. So if you're a race tear-off user, it is ready to go. That centrally located shield lock, that is also a great option. Really holds it in place, sealed it up really nice. Field of vision, whether you're in a tuck or you're looking through the corner, was awesome. And that's probably a direct result of the work that they've done right in racing, maybe with Yanni Hernandez at MotoGP. You have to be able to see completely whether you're in a tuck, right, or you're looking through the corner. So huge field of vision. Great job there. Removing and reinstalling the shield. I think every helmet at this point, right, they've got their own ratchet mechanism. Uh, this one works just fine. It's easy off. You push the trigger, thing pops right off. Repeat the process on the other side, pops right off. Show you here, there is a locator tab. It's got a little hook molded into it, right? That is the key to reinstalling the shield. Take a look right here on your ratchet mechanism. See we've got a channel here that that post is going to ride in. At the very top, it's cut out. It's kind of oblonged. What I want you to do is grab your shield and get that post the hook on that post dipped into the leading edge of that. Okay, and once you've done that, put it into the most upright position, and as you can hear, it just fell right into place. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. At the end of the day, you know, does a shield mechanism, you know, is, is that really a, a, an important feature? It's funny, I, I tell you it's easy and then I'm fumbling with it here. Is that really an important feature? How easy on or how easy off? Let's just say this is definitely not difficult. It's not like old school or ride difficult where you had to have a helmet technician to change it. Easy on, easy off, no worries. Central lock, certainly one of the high points of this helmet. You know, this is the point now where I'm going to kind of, I'm going to begin to, you know, cut off and do a lot of disassembly. You know, not everybody's into that, so... We'll just tidy up the last few features and bennies, and then we'll jump into the real technical details of this helmet. I already showed you the double D-ring retention system, emergency release, cheek pad, and neck roll. It's all kind of integrated as one, right? It comes with a chin curtain on it, a little reflective panel here if you are a street rider. Speaking of that, if you're a street rider, each one of these helmets I've noticed comes with, it's actually 3M, so you know it's good stuff, reflective stickers. They've also got a little card that shows you how and where to locate those. The concept there, it's really simple. It's nighttime visibility. Uh, the interior, comfortable 3D cut foam, and it's an antimicrobial high-end fabric. So, did I like the helmet? 
I really like the helmet. I love the way it looked. I love the way it fit. I really enjoyed the performance. And you got to remember when I'm doing this, you know, I'm keeping that price point in mind because value is, is huge. And that is one of my number one criteria. Where does the value lie with the amount invested in the product? And I got to tell you, I think that at this price point, you're getting a little more than you're spending, a little more value as compared to the money you're spending. I've seen a lot of great helmets now that are, are coming out at these price points that are much more palatable, you know, than $900. Are those $900 helmets good? Well, absolutely, they're good for sure, but they're also $900, you know, and you're crashing it. They're certified the same way. They pass the same tests. I mean, you can really, that whole safety thing, you can argue, argue, argue that, right? But the bottom line is they pass the same test. So I like it. If this is near price point, pull the trigger. I think you're going to like it too. All right, here we go. I'm going to take this helmet apart. I'm going to show you how to get the interior out, right? We're going to talk about the quality construction. One of the things that really turned me on to the LS2 brand was just that the quality of construction considering the price point of the helmets. And this is consistent through their whole line. To remove the cheek pad and neck roll combination, I found the most efficient way to do that was to grab a hold here of their emergency release cheek pad system, right? I want you to give it a tug downward like so, and you can see that that is all disengaging, right, and coming out as one unit. This is a little different, right, than we're used to looking at for sure. You can see it's got a metal ring that holds the chin curtain in, and this is actually used as part of the retention system for the neck roll. It rides in a channel on the bottom of the helmet. Cheek pads and neck roll all stitched together. It seals up really nice, the wind noise is very low, and this definitely helps to accomplish that. You can see how it's held in here. We've got two snaps at the bottom and then a channel, or like a tang that slides into a channel. The helmet is also ready for audio or communicator if you want to do that. Inside the helmet, to remove the top pad, the top pad is held in largely by the neck roll and cheek pad. So you'll see very little resistance to pull that out here at the back. That is completely normal. The front, where it is at the brow, where it slides into the channel, this is pretty standardized stuff. You know, it's you got a little tang here, right? Thing pops into the channel, holds itself in place. Got to release those. Sometimes you need to put a little upward pressure on that plastic tab to get it out. Good quality here of construction, right? Good build quality, the mesh, right? To let all the air flow through. The chin straps, the covers are padded really nicely, very comfortable. Those are also, uh, if you want, removable. There's a snap right here, right? You can see the red snap. You'd undo that, slide it off, so you can wash that stuff if you want to as well. I'm not going to take that off because, honestly, I've done it once. It's kind of a pain in the butt, so I don't want to do it again. That said, the EPS, multi-density, it is channeled out. That really enhances the airflow. You can see these big cutouts up here. That's where the air comes in, up on the crown of the helmet, flows around in the channels. Here's our exhaust vents back there. It's pretty simple. It comes in the front, gathers the heat, the moisture, and then drives it out the back of the helmet. You can see here, if you're going to use audio systems, it is all prepped and ready to install that. The way the emergency release cheek pad system works, you can see here, essentially, the snaps, right, they just pull down, pop right out. Got a nice finished chin bar here, right, lined chin bar. It's got like a foam there. Probably manage a little energy. Another high point would be the actual chin straps themselves. What they've done here is <clears throat> instead of having just a, just a rivet or, you know, a small fastener holding that, the metal end, right, of the chin strap is fastened through the fiberglass and then they're using a washer here. It adds a little weight but it adds quite a bit of strength so that it would be very difficult to pull the strap through the actual shell of the helmet. So they've added a little bit of weight to enhance the safety overall of the helmet. Breath deflector is included. 
gasket, of course, all the way around. And there you have it, the inside out view on the LS2 Arrow. Reinstallation, right? A little tricky. It's a little different than some of the other systems out there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go through that with you right now. We're going to start off once again with the top pad. And something that I think I would do, right? This helmet, okay, we've got this tag on here, right? It, it definitely, it has the date code and such on it. Just so you're not covering any of these vent holes, I think something that I would probably do is, I don't know that I'd recommend cutting it off, right? But I think, you know, kind of folding it neatly like this and just making sure that it's not covering, right, any of the vent holes. Because end of the day, you do that, you're going to lose airflow. Okay, so the way that tag is positioned in there, you know, you may want to mess around with that. Just take a second and kind of make sure that it is not obstructing anything. Let's go ahead now and reinstall the top pad. It's pretty simple to do. Just slide it in there until the tabs re-engage. The interesting part is actually the neck roll and cheek pad portion of the helmet. All right, that takes a little finesse, if you will, to get that in, get that lined up, and then we've got a plastic retainer here that slides between the uh, shell and the EPS. All right, just make sure you got it slid back in there, all, right, all the way down, like so. Now, the actual installation or reinstallation, if you will, of the neck roll cheek pad combo. Okay, now before I put this back in, I want to show you something. My personal preference with a helmet is to not use a chin guard or a chin spoiler because I feel like you get better airflow, right? It really allows, especially your breath, if you're riding hard, okay, on the track or on the street, hopefully on the track, when you exhale, it just allows it all to go out, okay? So removing it. You can see this looks like it's one piece and that's going to be different than anything we've worked with before. Um, I've experimented a little bit and what you need to do is this. The metal rod actually slides out of this piece of pipe right here, okay? Like so. And that allows you to remove your chin curtain. And then you go ahead and slide that all back together like so, okay? End of the day, the reinstallation process, it's going to be identical whether you have the chin curtain in the helmet or not. My personal use, you know, I'm not going to really ride with the chin curtain, so I've got that out. Now, I found the best way was to start by locating the metal rod into the chin bar first, okay? So we're gonna work from the chin bar, or the, the peak up here, all the way to the back of the helmet, and slide in to the channel that metal ring. And it's basically, it's kind of like, think of it as like almost a, a spring, okay? And make sure the gasket is on the outside of that retainer, like so. Right, so you gotta wiggle it around a little bit, right, on both sides, and make sure that it jumps in there, into the channel, good to go. Now, for the snaps. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is slide your actual chin strap through, okay? So that's not in the way. Remember the tab I showed you right here at the top of the cheek pad? I want you to locate the slot of the plastic cover for the EPS there. Slide that into position. From there, you can feel around internally for the snaps. There's one towards the front of the cheek pad, and then, of course, there is one towards the rear. Once you find them, Go ahead and put some inward pressure on it and secure those down. Repeat the process on the other side. 
like I said, definitely different. I mean, there's no question that this is, you know, not status quo, okay, in terms of assembly. There you go, and you can see fully, it, you do not have to have that chin curtain installed in there. You know, from what I can tell here, there is definitely no reason to leave it in there if you don't want it in. There's some riders might want to prefer it. Yeah, no problem, just leave it in there. But from what I can tell, taking it out, if you're like me and you want that space open, you are able to do that without worry. Obviously save it in case you need to reinstall it. And then we're gonna put our shield back on. There it is, LS2. Arrow, full face helmet. I'm Brian Vans, sportbiketrackgear.com.